Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Well, let me give the phone number out first. Oh, this is going to be weird. I can tell you that right now, Drew. For Mr. Dooley, we've got about a four-second delay in our headset. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191-1800-568-3191. That is the phone number. We're not going to give the fax number out tonight because we are in the Beckman Auditorium, which is in Caltech, which is in California, hence the Cal, the earthquake capital of the world. And uh, Drew and I are doing a live show, as it were. And uh, I want to I want to thank you guys for uh, coming out and uh, seeing us today. Make a little noise of... All right, settle down. <laughs> I am Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, and a ya ya yada. Mm-hmm. He uh, put on a little symposium tonight. What was it, Drew? I showed up late. Violence in the home, violence against children. Anyone get hurt? No. Good. You weren't here. I noticed one of the guys was from uh, Five Acres in Altadena yes, out here, yes. which my father was director of education of for 10 years. Is that something? Until he finally went insane and had to uh, open a private practice. But a uh, little bit of uh, Corolla history there. Anything you want to say, Drew? No, you have a good weekend? Yes. Let's get to it. Ready to get to the phone? Yeah, let's go. Brett, 15, you are on Loveline. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey. Um, before I get to my question, I was wondering, Adam. Is there any way I can get an autographed picture? Hmm. Absolutely. Of who? Of you. Oh, yes, yes. I, um, I'll uh, stamp one out. I have an autographed stamp. and has a tremendous pile of headshots, and I just churn them out like butter. Okay. That, that would be no. No, well, well, I don't have a headshot. That's right. And I can't sign my name. That's right. I'll put a big X on it. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. But I appreciate you asking, Brett. All right. Uh, my question is for whoever, and it is. Um, I'm 15, as you know, and uh, like most 15-year-olds I know, I have a stash of pornography. And my mom found it recently and just went nuts. Mm-hmm. What, what, what brand of pornography? Why is that important? Well, I, I want to know, I wanna know how hard the, the core of the porn was. Playboy penthouse. Oh, man. These days, your mom should be elated. That's like finding a Bible. <laughs> like finding the uh, Christian Science Monitor, the Wall Street Journal, and the Bible underneath your bed. What do you think about that, Adam? Kids having that kind of stuff. Uh, well, Playboy, I mean, how else are kids going to know what uh, women look like nude? That's a, those are good images of women? I hadn't seen my first w- nude woman outside the family until I was in my <laughs> mid-20s. If it hadn't been for uh, the godsend of the Playboy penthouse and occasional hust- hustler I found in a uh, trash dumpster. Brett, yeah. she doesn't trust you anymore? No, I was just thinking that, like, I thought she should be expecting that from me. Right. Yeah, I mean, think about it. I mean, what if she'd found uh, Colt Roundup or Blue Boy or something like that? How would she feel then? What, what was the issue she had? What was the problem? Not the issue. Excuse me, Adam. What was the problem she had with it? What, what, Her what's... explanation was that I shouldn't be looking at that because it was impure and hmm. that it was just she, she thinks I'm like the devil boy now. It wasn't any issues of how women are portrayed in those, in those things. Uh, yeah, that too. She, yeah. she just didn't like it overall, and I was just sort of saying, like, well, I got hormones and things, and right, what do you right. want from me? you got to put them somewhere other than the hamper. Uh, Damien, I mean, uh, Brett, yeah. is, is she there? Uh, yeah, well... She's Let me talk some like, sense into her. She's kind of uh, getting it on with daddy kins right now. No, come on. Oh, no, give Brett, me a break. Ridiculous. <laughs> come well, on. Drew, that's not that ridiculous no, that married I mean, couples no, have no, sex no, once no, in a while. Just having... because you're not getting any doesn't mean relax, Brett's mom relax. doesn't get none. Relax. relax. They're not getting it on. They're having one of their dinner things. Okay. All right. Well, listen, Brett. Mm-hmm. It, tell her it's natural. Tell her it's normal. Get your dad involved in this one. Certainly, he had uh, something. I don't know what he, what he had back in the back in the fifties. Something called Frisky or something like that, where some chick with a beehive hairdo and her, you know, part of a bra strap down around her shoulder. But it was the same type of thing. Get him involved. Okay. Get him to bail you out. All right, Brett. All right. All right, Mahalo. Sally, sixteen. You're on Loveline. Oh yeah. Okay. Hi, Adam. Doctor Drew. Sally. Hey. Okay. Well, um, my sister, she thinks that she's like all that, but she's all splat, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, I mean, she just thinks that she's really cool. I mean, she one time asked her boyfriend if he wanted, like, an autographed picture of her. Like, she's like, oh, I could give you a picture of myself naked wearing nothing but a hat. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? And I'm sitting there, like, giving her this dirty look. And she's like, oh, why are you giving me that look? How old is your sister? 17. I had a... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 
she thinks that she's just like so cool though. She like one time I'm looking in this magazine and I'm like, oh, how do you think I'd look in this dress? And she's like, well, you wouldn't look real good, but I would look fab. And she takes the like magazine and runs out the door or something. I'm like, do you think she's compensating maybe for not feeling good at all about herself? I think that might be it. Like, now, what she look like? I mean, she's pretty and like has a lot of friends and stuff, but she's not like that great i mean they're you yeah know, uh, you ever see i know drew you're not home during the day uh, basically wasting your life away in front of the television set with your pants around your ankles like i am but <laughs> if you were you would know that every once in a while on a oprah or a um a geraldo or something like that they have people and the topic is people who think they're all that and it's basically a bunch of mediocre looking women sitting around who are who are uh, telling everyone how beautiful they are and they always sort of and they never quite look right to me. Well, that's right. I mean, people think of anybody you know who would toot their own horn that way. I mean, nobody who's behaving in that manner really, truly feels good about themselves. It's, I mean, a, compen you can't, it's a compensation. It's a compensation. Thing. It's it's some kind of a defense. I I'll mean, it, I'll give you an example. I'm sorry for cutting you off, Drew. Uh, no, I'm not. Wow. I thought about it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I have no remorse. Uh, I used to box, as you know. You used to. Well, I still do. But when I used to box at a real tough place in uh, East L.A. on uh, Hope Street, which has been torn down it was right behind the olympic auditorium and I, I was the only uh sort of white boy from the valley there a lot of inner city tough guys and uh just the scariest looking guys in the world who basically beat up things for a living huh. but these guys would get on a heavy bag and they'd beat the crap out of it and they had a bell that would ring every three minutes and another bell that would ring every minute and everyone would stop after the three minutes and rest for a minute and then go back to what they were doing well once in a while some guy would come in and get on your bag because you were over resting and he thought it was unoccupied and you'd go up to some guy with tattoos and he, a mohawk and you know 250 pounds and scary as hell and you like you were shaking but you'd say uh i i was hitting that bag and they'd go oh Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> like it was a, a great Poupon commercial or something. And I realized these guys were so tough that they didn't have to put on this, this veneer. Right. They were, even, though, even though some of the stuff they were already, the appearance was some of it of a veneer. Right. They didn't have to go beyond that. They did it for a living. They were totally secure with, yeah. with their ability to kick ass on about 99% of the country. Yeah. And so they didn't need to ram it down everyone's throat every time they saw right. it. And, and it's that kind of compensation we're talking I, about. I suspect your sister's got big problems. So take it easy on her and feel sorry for her, okay, Sally? Yeah, but I mean, sometimes we're sitting there and she'll just like, oh, out, like Sal out Sally, window. I don't want to hear about it anymore. I'm oh, blah, blah, blah. Whack, 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 whack. Sally, come on, be, be, be big, would you? She's got just probe a little bit beneath that and tell her that you, you you just don't understand why she feels that way. Is she is she really that secure with herself? And kind of probe in a little bit and see if maybe she opens up to oh, you. Okay. Forget about probing. Thanks for call, Leave Sally. her alone. What is this? She. <laughs> it's not a it's not a moonwalk. You don't no, need a probe. Can, just look, leave her alone. She should disdain her sister. Or she should try to make a connection no, with her. She should try to, to make other, a connection. Go to the other side of the house and wait till everyone turns eighteen and moved out like I did. Beautiful. Do we have another call, Drew? You know what? Uh, we if we do, we can't see it. it looks like line two is on. Oh, we're screwed. Uh, line two. Hey, Dooley. Hello. Oh, for Christ's sake. Who is this? This is Andy. Oh, Andy. Oh, see, we never would have picked Andy if we had a choice. Andy, how old are you? 18. All right. What's All right. Up? All right, here's the situation. Um, one of my better friends uh, last couple months was uh, seeing my ex-girlfriend, and he wasn't telling me about it. And uh, come to find out, he was uh, screwing her. And he told me that, uh, like, I asked him about it, and he... He's all, no, man, he's all, my friendship means more to me than that. And he just totally lied to me for two months about it. And half my friends are telling me to kick his ass, but I don't know what should I do. How, how long have you been broken up with her? Mm, it was about, it was like a couple, I would say two months. Mm -hmm. But he was, he like, from what I heard, he like moved in like right, like when I was like trying to still make things work. Right. But I don't know. Did he hang out with the three of you when you were hanging out? I mean, when you you two were going out? Yeah, he was like like constantly there, and I I you know like I kind of suspected it, but I trust him enough to be a friend. But I guess not. How old is this character, Andy? He's eighteen. Oh, he's eighteen too. Mm -hmm. Let me explain the mentality of the eighteen-year-old. Yeah. Hold your breath. <laughs> Take notes. You, you have that Discovery Channel. Once in a while, they do a special on the uh, the wily hyena. 
And basically, here's the way the hyenas work. The lion does all the leg work. The lion chases down the wildebeest or water buffalo or whatever the hell the lion is eating at the time. He chases the thing. He knocks it down. He kills it. And then he sits there and tries to eat it. But then about 150 hyenas come around it, and they start growling, and the, the lion fends off as many of them as he can, but eventually he's outnumbered. The uh, lion's got to go scamper off and kill another wil wildebeest, and the hyenas all devour what's left of the carcass. That's basically what your friends are like with your girlfriend when you're 18. They uh, hang around beautiful. like the wily hyena. Colorful. Not laughing. I don't know where they got that laughing thing. Very powerful jaw with those hyenas. And they, they jump in, and you turn your head for a second, boom, they jump in and start gnawing at the carcass and of so your what with the hyenas? How do you treat hyenas? You gotta stash your prey. Oh, great. In a cave. <laughs> In a cave. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And, uh, and put your scent on it. So, well, okay. All right. Settle down. The crowd's getting unruly now. Those chairs are bolted down, aren't they, Drew? I hope so. We don't need some kind of Geraldo like incident going on here at Beckman Auditorium. All right. Screw him. Listen, screw her, screw him, and move on, Andy. Thanks. You're bigger than that, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Big man. Good. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Amanda, 15, you are on Loveline. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, my problem is my mom and dad just got a divorce, and my dad has a girlfriend, and, like, a while ago she got pregnant, and she had the baby, and where we moved, um, our apartment manager is my dad's girlfriend's cousin, so, like, my dad's girlfriend is always over here, and when she came over here last time, I kind of cussed her out, and... My dad called, and he told me, he's all, why did you cuss her out? I was like, because I don't like her, and, and she just keeps coming over here, and I don't know what to do with her. I, I'm not following this. Uh, they're, they're somewhere from in Kentucky, I think, <laughs> and the, the manager keeps coming over or the girlfriend? My dad's girlfriend, because my dad's girlfriend's cousin is our apartment manager. But your, your dad's girlfriend and he have a child together? Is that what you said? Yeah, because he was having an affair with my mom. All right, what's, oh. the, what's the manager? I need to what's, diagram this. All right, what's the apartment manager have to do with anything? Because my, my, she comes to see my apartment manager. My dad's girlfriend comes to see her because it's her cousin. They come to visit. And, and, and your dad and his girlfriend do not have a relationship anymore? They do. And, and it my just, dad, he says it's okay with it. She's, and your dad, still, your dad is still married to your mom? Yes. I see. You got the... Got the... Okay, so, uh, Amanda, you, your mom, and your dad are all living in an apartment managed by the cousin of your dad's mistress. Right. My dad's and... not living with us. Oh, for Christ's sake. Well, where is he? He's living with his girlfriend in Rialto. I see. And the girlfriend keeps coming over, and it torments you and makes yeah, you feel bad. Oh, I, I, see. Her, I, swear. I see. I see. I see. Is, is that the reason you and your mom are broken up? Yeah, that's the reason my mom and dad broke up. Wow. I mean, it's natural you'd feel that way, Amanda. I mean, I. But can, can my your mom, mom doesn't trust me anymore because my my friend told me that I was doing drugs and just. I try to talk to people, but it doesn't work. Can you see how? And my mom keeps me in the house just in case I, to watch me so I don't kill myself. Are you thinking about killing yourself? <laughs> Amanda? Yeah. Is you, have you been in any kind of treatment at all? We have peer counseling at school. And they told my mom, but all she did was yell at me about it. Okay. Can you understand that it's natural enough to feel this way and to do these kinds of things in the circumstance you're in? Yes. All right. I mean, it's not it's not that you're bad. You didn't cause this. There's nothing wrong with you. But you do need help. I know. All right. I mean, I, can you get to help? I mean, do you have a family doctor or anything like that you could talk no. to? Do you have insurance? I don't know. Um, the girl at school said that I could go to Chino Human Services, but my mom won't let me. She won't well, let me talk to anyone unless they're Christian. Well, I do I think... talk to my friend, my friend Marie. She she talks to me a lot. She helps me a lot because right. I mean, you need she to keep all me so much. All the friends you can around you. I mean, you need that kind of support. But it sounds like you need more than that. You know, I mean, if you're really thinking about hurting yourself, it's just like any other life-threatening medical problem. You got to deal with it. You know, you got. And plus, you're doing drugs, and who knows what you're going to do to yourself biologically just from that, just acting out how you're feeling. Are, are you doing drugs? Yes. Yeah, she, yeah, she's doing drugs, and that's going to make you feel worse. You know, what I like to do is talk to Amanda off the air. Can you, Amanda? Can you hang on a few minutes? Yeah. Can you? Okay. It's just about five minutes, Amanda. Okay. Okay. All I'll right. be with you in just a minute. Thanks for calling, uh, Judy. You uh, are 14. You're on Loveline. Hi. Um. Well, I have this problem. Um. I'm in eighth grade and. 
I, like, I'll like a guy, and I'll like them, like, a whole lot, and I'll totally go after them, and once I get them and we start getting, like, physically close, I'll totally end up pushing them away. I don't know. I guess I get kind of scared or something, and, like, totally before I start going out with them or anything, I totally want nothing in the world more to, like, be with them, but then after, I totally push them away, and it's getting to be a problem because I get a really bad reputation. Uh, uh, Judy? Yeah. Do me a favor, check down and see if you have a penis. Excuse me? I think she has a penis. I think this is uh, Jackie. This ain't Judy. Excuse me? Could, could she have, what does she have, two X's or X? No, no, or what, no. How's that? Oh, she why? Has problems with intimacy. I mean, it's something we This is a also. guy problem, No, though. this is a guys do that because they can, really. They get away with it. They, they choose not to have intimacy. Women really are, are, are pursuing intimacy, and she has some problem. It's the physical part. How far do you go with these guys? Making out, and nothing that's, more than that's that. the point at which you, you feel disgusted in some way and have to get away from them. Yeah, it's, and it's Woody causing Allen. like reputation problems. Sure. Right. Right. Drew's Woody Allen reference is um, actually I thought it was a Groucho Marx thing originally, right. but uh, he, he wouldn't want to uh, join a club that would have him as a member. There, there is that element, and there's also fear of intimacy. I mean, something must have happened to you along the way that made you frightened about getting close to somebody. And you're 14. I mean, give yourself a break. Try not to get yourself in those circumstances where you're going to be pressured in any kind of physical closeness and be very, very slow and easy with the relationships that you develop. Oh, well, be good let's to find yourself. out what, what got taken away from her. All right, what happened? Judy? What do you mean? What relationship did you have uh, that got sort of taken away from you? Well, like, um, I was in a short relationship with this one guy, like my first nah, boyfriend. For, nah, forget about that. Where's your dad? My dad? Yeah, where is he? Downstairs. Uh-huh. And how's your relationship with him? Um, I hate him. That's ah, about it. Imagine well. that. Imagine that. Except for that, everything's fine. Yeah. And and it may be something, you know, in, in a couple minutes on the radio, we can't really get into the specifics of this. But it, it, what Adam's getting at is that the, those relationships that you build when you're very young imprint things on your brain that come and affect you as you try to establish your adult life as an adolescent. So just be very, very slow and make sure it's somebody you really want to be with and build the relationship slowly, okay? okay. Yeah, and, and realize when you get this over, you know... Th you're affected by both aspects of it, mean, meaning the impulse to go after somebody in a sort of blind, uh, I shouldn't say rage, but uh, sort of blindly chasing somebody and building a huge fantasy about some guy who just transferred from another junior high and you've never spoken to is not real. Right. And it's also not real when you uh, make out with him and, and projectile vomit on, onto the sofa. It's neither one of them's real. You know, you know what I mean? They're both yeah. manifestations right. of this relationship with the dad that didn't go right. Right, Drew? S something like that. All but right. the point is just be very careful with your relationships and build them slowly, and that may help you get through some of this, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Jennifer, you're uh, 13. You're on Love Line. Hi. Jennifer? Hey. Um, I had a problem really big. Um, I, just, I just got with a guy relationship. We just got together, and I really love him with all my heart. I, just, I, can't, I still can't believe I'm with him. And How old is he? He's 16. Hmm, imagine that. Yeah, and he's really fine, and I mean, I thought, like, I could never get him. So when I did, I was, like, so happy, and we talked about, like, having sex and all that. But I'm, like, edgy about it because I was a rape victim before. Right. What happened? Um, one night I... It was sort of my fault, too, because one night I, I snuck uh, out of the house and... It's, it's, look, it's never your fault to be the victim of a violent crime, okay? I mean, you may learn about what kind of circumstances you don't want to put yourself in again that put you at risk for that, mm -hmm. but it's a violent crime. You were a victim. I know, but it's And, hard and the see. fact is that you're being victimized again. Don't you dare have sex with this guy. It'll be the same thing all over again. All right, but what, what was the story behind the rape? Was it, was it someone you knew? Was it a yeah. family member? No, it's the guy I went out with, and I needed a ride home, and I thought he wouldn't do anything to me, and I thought wrong. Mm. Did and you, the counselors did, tell me it's not my fault, but then my parents say it is my fault. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, you know, I'm just, but I really love this guy and I, I care about him, but. But, but look, what the this hell guy, with these parents, but, bro. But yeah, but the, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. But then what's going on now that she's about to fall into is ridiculous too. I mean, she loves this guy, so she wants to do what he wants to do, which is have a physical relationship. It's not what you want to do, is it, Jennifer? No. No, and but don't do it. Learn how to say no to that. You've got to stand up against that. If that guy only wants you for a physical relationship, it's not what you're looking for. It's going to end up 
making you feel abused again and harming you. Yeah, but now since that happened, I feel like I'm getting easy now. It's like now when a guy asks me to do something, I right. am just so... You're, 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 you're into that victim mode. You're, you can be a victim again. Yeah, right, because once your, your self-esteem gets sort of uh, bruised and battered, it makes you an easy victim. I mean... You, yeah, you end up doing are, things you wouldn't want to do or normally do. And yeah, now my friends are calling me slut and all that because I will do anything with all these other guys. Jennifer. Mm -hmm. All right, Jennifer, but you know where the, the source of the problem is. It's you doing things that other people want you to do and not doing what Jennifer wants you to do. I know. It's like I already did a mistake yesterday. I went to a party and I scammed with a guy. All right. I can't control myself. Yes, you can. You, Certainly you can. If you can't, get some help doing it. Believe okay. me, I spent my entire junior high and high school watching women control themselves very nicely around me. Thank you. It's amazing how that Oh, works. incredible restraint these women had. They went all the way through, hmm? That, that went, well, up until now. Okay. Actually, a little past now, if that's possible. I'm, I'm planning on my next sexual liaison. I think I'm going to be in my mid-30s. All right, Jennifer, you control yourself. Please you can get, do it. Yeah, please get yourself some help if you have trouble. Please and, don't, don't do it. Please don't do it. And we'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Robin Leach with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams. And you're listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Phone number here at Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. We're coming from Caltech. More specifically, the Beckman Auditorium. Drew has just uh, put on a symposium on violence in the uh, family. Right, and a couple of doctors stayed behind to give us uh, some advice during one of the segments here. For once, I get to choose the guest, have people from my profession here. It's amazing. You're outnumbered, Adam. Now, what, I love this. Uh, what band are these doctors yeah, in? Right, this is uh, Dr. Roy Antilles and Dr. Carol Lieberman. I'll let each of them introduce themselves. Roy, you are? I'm part of the Three Musketeers. Right. There are three of us he's, here. He's an emergency room doctor here locally in, in this part of the country. And uh, Carol Lieberman? I'm a psychiatrist from Beverly Hills. And you have been consulting on violence in the media. Yes. Right. So we're going to try to get some calls about that kind of stuff. And I'm going to let them answer some of these questions. See how they All do right. And, and we're going to basically attack you if we can. <laughs> Fantastic. I have my minions who will come down here and protect me. Right, minions? <laughs> right. Right. Sounds like laughing hyenas to right. me. <laughs> Everyone's getting into the act. Now, uh, Drew, you want to give a quick uh, plug or something like that and see if people are in the neighborhood want to swing by and uh, stop here and sure, like, shoot a spit wad at me yeah, or something? We're, we're in the, yeah, that'd be, hmm. we are at the Beckman Auditorium in Caltech. It's in Pasadena in the corner of California and near the California Wilson. Just ask people how to get here. It's sort of in the center of the campus, and uh, people are welcome to come in. It's free and watch what we do here. Uh, let's go to calls. I'm going to let... Uh, these guys answer some of my questions, so hold on here. All right. Let's well, do this. Pick them. All right. Uh, Alex, uh, 18, you're on Loveline. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Uh, you know, I need to talk to you guys because I, like, I think I need a girlfriend, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to settle down with somebody. You know, I'm 18. I just got out of jail on my birthday, and uh, I graduated high school. I got a lot of money. I'm moving into a house with a friend. Did, Alex, did they, did, they let, did they let you go because it was your birthday? Oh, yeah. I was in juvenile hall uh, since uh, May 22nd, 1992, and wow. uh, placements, boys' homes, etc. And uh, I got oh. released on my birthday. Oh, when you turn 18? Right, April 20th. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I've been with a few girls since then. Um, nothing serious, nothing to brag about, but, you know, I just need a girlfriend. It's, it's hard to meet girls. Oh, wait, what were um, you in for? I was in for a few things. Attempted murder, uh, possession and distribution, GTA. Uh, assault and battery, two counts of assault with a deadly weapon. You name it, I've been there, I've done it. Okay, best to uh, not put forth that information on the first or <laughs> maybe even the second date. I'm, I'm no doctor, but Carol, you're a psychologist. You would be a little spoke. Uh, sorry, psychiatrist over there, all right. And if some guy showed you his rap sheet on the first date, that would be a little spooky, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah I think so. But uh, you, you said you have a lot of money. <laughs> now, that might be uh, something that would help to overcome your past history unless the money was related to these crimes. Did you actually succeed in these robberies? Um, some, yes, uh, but the money is from my parents dying. Um, I got inheritance from the accident and all. Uh, we won't ask about the accident. Yeah, I was just <laughs> but you weren't, you didn't cut any brake lines on their car or anything, did you, Alex? No, I didn't. I was okay. locked up. 
Okay. Well, I just wonder, you know, why, I mean, granted, one can understand after being incarcerated for a period of time why you might want female company, but I, I wonder uh, whether you really have done enough on yourself in those years. I mean, do you really think that you are, you know, comfortable enough with your own identity and who you are to, but you have to be comfortable in that before you go out and start a relationship. And coming right out of jail, I just wonder, you know, wh how, whether you're settled in yourself first. I totally understand what you're talking about. You know, I've been talked to a lot about that. You know, it's, I've never been loved. I don't feel that I have from my parents or my family. And I've never loved anybody. And I want someone to love, and I want someone to love me. You know, and I want to love. You know, I just, I don't know. I have this missing thing where there's no one here. I go to bed every night by myself. I wake up by myself. I spend the day by myself. You know, and it's kind of depressing. I need some, some company. You know, Do you like dogs? <laughs> well, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, I would really prefer a female. You know. Dogs well, have just you... doesn't do it for me. I was going to say they have female dogs, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the angle we're working here. Uh, well, Alex, it sounds like, uh, I mean, it sounds like obviously you had yourself some uh, trouble in the past. Right. And uh, that's the understatement of the year. But you're out. You're okay. You're on the straight and narrow right. now, correct? It's all in the past. You've paid your debt. Yeah. It's turning into a Tony Orlando song, actually. But the point is, is you want love. You don't just want a one-night stand, right? Exactly. I mean, that shouldn't be too hard to find because there's plenty of women who want the same thing. But see, I mean, when I that's go out and look really for wants. it, it looks like, you know, everybody just wants sex, 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 sex. And that's, that's not what he wants. You know, he really wants something genuine, which is amazing given his history. Amazing. And he may not be able to access it, right? He may that, have difficulty That's the problem, it. exactly. I think you need to be a little, well, first of all, obviously at 18, that's not a time for anybody to be settling down, whether they've had a history like yours or, or otherwise. But, um, you know, I'm thinking of two things. First of all, it's great that you want love, and it's great that you recognize that you weren't loved, and it's going to be hard to go from where you are to what you want, and you're going to have to take it slowly. It's not going to be the first relationship. And the other thing is that you have to be careful that even though you're saying you don't want sex, you know, obviously you were into a life where that was very exciting before. And you have to be careful that you're not just trying to find a girlfriend or a wife to make up for the excitement that you're not having in these more criminal ways. Right. Right. And Alex, don't don't go nuts when you get your first date. You, you know what I mean? I mean, don't don't put all your sperm into one basket. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Because you could get yourself fixated onto somebody, lock into it, then the whole stocking thing goes on, and you know what I mean? Right. Just wait, make sure it feels right, and uh, take it at a good even pace. All right, Alex. Do you guys have any, uh, like, references on, you know, where to hang out, best place to pick up chicks? Where are you calling from? Uh, Canoga Park. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, there's there's a lot of strip bars out that way. Actually, Bob's classy <laughs> ladies out in that, that area. And Adam, you kind of connected awfully quickly to the uh, stocking thing. Is there a story there? Naps, I left my stockings at a girl's house. No, no, once, no, stalking. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. You never stalked. I don't know. Wasn't there, I, what, did what, some, yes. like, I did some stocking, but the thing is I got a whole napping schedule, so it sort of conflicts with the stocking <laughs> schedule. But there was that one time out in front of the girl's apartment. Remember that thing? Uh, she wouldn't let you in. You kept going back. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, Drew, why, uh, Carol, you know this is a very painful thing, and it should, we should not uh, uncover these wounds, should we? Is this healthy to have him prodding me with a stick like this while I'm trying to do a radio show? It's probably show? good for him. I don't care what's good for him. All right, Alex, get lost. Tracy, you're uh, 19. You're on Loveline. Hi. Um, I got a problem. A couple of weeks ago, um, my best friend and I were at a party. He's a guy. And... Um, we ended up drinking a little bit too much, and we were in a spa in the backyard, and uh, and we did a little bit more than best friends should probably do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's real weird now because it's kind of awkward, and, like, he won't talk about it, and every time I've tried to bring it up um, on the sly, he doesn't pick up on my cues, or he probably does, but he's just ignoring them, and he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> and he's not a very communicating kind of guy anyhow in the first place, but um, I don't know. It's weird for me. How far did you go? Um, oral. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the history behind it. We had done it before when we were, like, a couple years ago, before we were ever really close mentally. Like, when we first met each other, we had a physical relationship, but not a real good mental relationship. And then we stopped the physical, and we got totally good mentally. And then that happened, the, like, the other weekend. Right. All right. So this, the, yeah, but you you had done it before. Right. 
Okay, now um, I, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, because you guys had started off physically, you just sort of went and revisited. Uh, his, his penis was like some ant that came into town, and it'd been a couple of years exactly. between visits. Hey, it's Aunt Penis, <laughs> Uncle Penis. Hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. Great. I've had a few beers. Meet Mr. Jacuzzi. Fantastic. So, Tracy, he's probably a little. Uh, was is he small? Oh, stop it. Cut it out. Why is that important? Because a guy won't want to talk about it if he's small. Believe me, a guy's got a huge penis. He'll talk about it all day long. Oh, Oh, come on. Come on. This is his friend. He feels uncomfortable. They violated some boundaries that they had set up together. Their relationship was stable, and now it's destabilized. You need to reestablish the relationship. Sort of a homeostasis, a balance in your relationship needs to be reestablished. The new rules need to be established. You need to find out how your feelings have changed as a result of this, and then go forward with your friendship, hopefully. All right, but are you suggesting they should really sit down and hash it out? Yeah, I do. All right, here's my here's my guess. Trace, you sit down and start hashing out all the uh, the uh, events leading up to the Hummer, and you're going to give him another one. That's what, that's the way it's going. No, yeah, no. they sit down and what happened, and let's figure out what went wrong. Next thing you know, boom, the, uh, Uncle Penis then, is then, back in town. Oh yes, am I right, audience? Come on. Then, then they have then they uh, they have a different relationship. Then their relationship has changed and will be changed permanently. But they need to deal with that. Yeah, because now, like I felt so. Like dirty, almost. Just, I ah. felt like he was my brother. It was so yeah. like it's disgusting. See, I, I have a feeling that that I, I bet you, my just my instincts tell me that he maybe has more feelings about this than you do. He's maybe more comfortable with this, and uh, and he senses your discomfort and doesn't know what to do about. Well, what about it? having a go with a real relationship? I mean, you That's guys are physically attracted she's, to each she's other. She's sort of saying no. It doesn't feel right to her. It doesn't. It really yeah. doesn't. He's like he's he's not a very sensitive kind of person, and. It just would not gel very well. Okay. All right. Well, I say talk to him about it, but make it in a brief statement. All right. Do it at a coffee house don't, in don't public. S- don't, in public. Oh, you want her to go down on him in no. public? <laughs> True. That's, that's disgusting. It's against the law. Now, just make it a short Make it a short statement. Uh, what, you know, we had a few beers. We got a little out of control. It's never going to happen again. I'm sorry it happened, and I hope we can get back to where we were before it happened. All right? Okay. All right. Very sensible. Uh, Molly, you're 19. You're on Loveline. Yes. Hi. Um, Dr. Drew, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering if after intercourse, if it's natural for a woman to drain. Now, I'm going to let Dr. Antilles answer this. He's uh, some forensic expert in uh, pelvic examinations and whatnot. And so, Dr. Antilles, the question is, is if, if stuff comes out after intercourse, yeah. is that normal? Uh-huh. The simple answer would be yes. It's normal. Uh, I mean, it, it, there's a couple of parts to that. If uh, you're pra- are you practicing safe sex? Is he using a condom? No, I'm on birth control. But still, uh, still. okay. Well, yeah. Even even so, you know, the, the it we're just talking about the content of whatever comes out afterwards. Okay. Uh, if if he's not using a content, obviously some of what he put in you is then going to come out. In addition to that, there's going to be some of you as well. Okay. And that's that's perfectly normal. Doctor normal Doctor Roy, what if it's coming out of your ear? <laughs> <laughs> then you've tried something I haven't tried. Yeah, exactly. Adam Adam uh, evidently has tried something. So thank you and thanks for the call. And Adam, we have to go to commercials. And we'll be back. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one one eight hundred five six eight thirty one ninety one. That would be the phone number. We're not going to give the fax number because we're not at our usual place. We are not at Westwood One. This isn't Kansas. We, this is <laughs> for some people. It is. This, this for is, some people. This is. is Pasadena. This is Caltech. We are in uh, Beckman Auditorium. A beautiful facility, I, I might add, and a beautiful campus. Almost makes me wish I took the SATs. But now I laugh at all you struggling college students because I'm a big-time radio guy, aren't I, Drew? Oh, big time. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, We have Roy Antilles and Carol Lieberman. Drew, tell us about them. Uh, Roy is an ER doc, and Carol is a uh, specialist in violence in the media, and she's here to talk about uh, that and its effect on violence in the home. And uh, Dr. Antilles runs a program for scanning or or for detecting uh, abuse and neglect in the home. And we thought this was an interesting forum to bring them right, in, well, and I need some help sometimes against you. I mean, you always bring your guests in, whoever you want. And oh, for Christ's sake, up on me Oh, sake. they all love you. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. You get, you gotta be. You can't be serious. These mm. these guests come in here. I say something, they get right on top of me, and they agree with everything you say. Mm, that doesn't. Yes. All right. Because you got that stinking lab coat, and you bought yourself a diploma in Tijuana. They agree with everything you say. <laughs> 
Roy, well, let's talk to our guest for just a second, starting with Roy because he's closest to me. Now, Roy, what do you look for when uh, you look for potential abuse victims, I guess, in children? Well, depending on the kind of abuse, it depends on how they behave. Uh, starting from very little kids, obviously, some of the, the physical abuse and, and the neglect you can tell just by looking, whether the child's filthy or has an obvious injury or, or something like that. The sexual abuse gets to be a little more difficult, and, and then you have to look at behaviors or, or have parents sometimes that come in and talk about their kids acting out sexually, and you'll have a three-year-old uh, masturbating or going down on, an, on another little kid, and which is obviously not a normal thing for a three-year-old to do. And that, that's usually a sign that somebody has molested them. They've seen it somewhere or they've been part of it somehow, and, and, and that's something that you need to find out about. The thing that everybody forgets, and we talked about this earlier before the radio show even started, is uh, we'll get people that will uh, bring in their child who was abused by the, let's say they have a five-year-old girl that was, was sexually abused by the seven-year-old boy next door. Everybody focuses in on the five-year-old girl, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But where did the seven-year-old boy next door figure out how to do that? It's usually and, an adult having, having violated them some way. Yeah, exactly. That seven-year-old boy has probably been violated himself, and that kid can't be forgotten. But, but Carol, you would contend it was too much Baywatch, am I right? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of your angle on things, isn't it? Well, it, too much Baywatch, but um, actually, well, actually, in, 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 uh, more, that works more in, the ter in terms of violence. I mean, we have the example of uh, the six-year-old boy in Northern California and his two eight-year-old playmates who beat up a little baby, a four-week-old baby. And same idea, where do they see that? You know, um, yes, they could have been physically abused in their home, but also it's likely that they saw it um, from Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and they're trying to, and Batman, uh, and they're trying to act out these things on someone else the way that they've seen their superheroes do it. I think uh, Kathy Lee and Regis had an episode where they smacked around a toddler, if I'm not mistaken. But be that as it may, Carol, so you, you would say that the, the media does have a, a strong influence on the uh, on kids and their behaviors. Absolutely. And you know, what, what shows specifically? You mentioned the Ninja Turtles and cartoons and things like that. Do you have any specific shows that are uh, your top five list, for instance? <laughs> My hit list. They're probably going to be the shows I enjoy the most, but go ahead. Well, you know, actually on television, some of the worst things are uh, the movies that haven't been edited. You know, they just show the same movies uh, that we see in the theater at all different times. And nowadays, kids have televisions in their rooms. No matter how much money their parents have, somehow they find the money to put television sets in their rooms. And they're watching them at 1 and 2 o'clock in the morning. And instead of feeling powerful, helping their kids to feel powerful by giving them tutors or whatever it is that they need to feel better about themselves so that they can feel powerful, powerful in themselves, they just let them play all the video games that they want, spend hours, you know, at the arcades, watching television, watching these movies, and they can pretend to be as powerful as their heroes. So you're, you're working more of a, uh, a nurture route than a nature route. With, with the, as it pertains to violence. You're saying it's the environment. Well, no, I think obviously it's the parents, too. Um, you know, parent, but the problem is the parents are giving their children over to television and videos and movies at younger and younger ages. All right, if you're, let's say your your six year old is dying for this uh, plastic gun that he sees up on the rack at the toy store, should you get it for him? Absolutely not. And and what if he's twelve and dying for it? Should you still get it for him? <laughs> you should never get it for him. What if he's eighteen and he's dying for it? Do you get it for him? Well, no, because the bum should be working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, you really should hook up with Drew's kids. They're very violent. I don't know where they picked it up. I don't know what kind of environment's going on over there, but these are three-year-olds. It's, like it's like a tag team wrestling match. The kids flying all over the place. My wife's going to literally... Oh, she's in the next room. Come That's on, right. right. I've got to clean it up. All right, we'll get a little more into this. Now, what about Loveline? Is this okay, this radio show, or are we doing a tremendous disservice to no, the youth of America? Like, <laughs> sounds like you're doing a great service. Not just kissing ass? No, I'm not. <laughs> not just saying that because you know I'll throw your ass right out of this auditorium? <laughs> no, I'm going to be on for the next ten times, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You keep, keep that up. All right, uh, Willie, 22, you're on Loveline. Hey, how's it going? Alan? Hey, good. I want to change my name to John, though. All right, John. For, for an anonymity. Fine, <laughs> fine, Willie John. <laughs> uh, I, I've had the same best friend for like seven years, and uh, he's about to marry his uh, longtime girlfriend, and I don't like her. Well, 
Yeah, that's enough of that then, isn't it? I don't think I don't think he likes her either, though. Why? Why is he marry her then? Uh, he's just I, he's like comfortable. I just think he can do a lot better, you know. And I, did you, I just in a bad spot because she you like uh, pits us against each other, you know. Does he know you don't like her? Huh? Does he know you don't like her? Uh, yeah, he knows I don't like her. I think she knows too. <laughs> and and Willie John, what's not to like? He sounds like a blues singer, doesn't he? Hey, it's Willie John. Welcome to the stage, a blues styling of yeah, Willie I John. Yeah, harmonica too. Willie, listen. Wh- yeah. What is it? What is it that she does specifically that you can't stand? Uh, she's breathing. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> well, uh, she. I mean, we just used to spend a lot of time together, and she's just like, I don't know. I'm not gay or anything, but it sounds like she's taking him away from me. Well, exactly. That's it. You're jealous. You're afraid that he's not going to be so as close to you once he gets married to her. And he probably won't be. No, 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 no. Actually, after you get married, well, that's, that's when, when you, close. you do anything you can to get away from the wife. So, so yeah, I that'll bring you guys closer together. Hang around until he gets married to her and then he won't want to be around her? Right. Yeah, if I were you, I would, <laughs> I, would move, I would move the date up. Move the date up? Yes, get them a nice place setting. They get married, and I'm telling you, six months from now, you guys are going to be sitting at some nudie bar uh, you know, during happy hour, putting down pictures, and he'll be complaining about her to no end. That's where I want it to be again, you know, because it's like, uh, you, you'll we've be been right back. we like 15, and like, when we were 15, we couldn't sit at a nudie bar and uh, knock okay. back pictures, you know? Willie, well, listen, really listen, listen, you got all your eggs in one, one basket, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you got one friend. No, no, no. <laughs> Sir, sure you do. You got one guy that's getting married and your world's coming apart. He has, he has two friends. He has two friends. Yeah. Right. One of them's a stuffed animal and the other is his buddy who's getting married. And Rosie. Yeah, yeah. Rosie Palm and her five fingers. Right. Yeah. Willie, listen. Go out and make another friend. Come on, dude. All right, Willie, we've had enough of you. All right, bye. <laughs> What a joker. Anna. No. Yeah, Anna, 17, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. Okay, my question is for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. I've been reading about the Castriati in 18th or 17th century Italy, and basically mm-hmm. it was sopranos who were castrated when they were young. No, they were tenors who were castrated. No, sopranos. Oh, sopranos. Right, the kids are sopranos. Okay. Uh, they, would have been tenors. they would have been tenors had they grown up with testes. Right. And so I was wondering, too, uh, the, the way, novel but... is about someone who was castrated at an older age, mm-hmm. and he, like right before his voice started to change, and mm-hmm. I wanted to know what the biological effects were like. If an adult male, if this happened in, to an adult, do, does he regress physically, or like what happens? Maybe you guys can comment with me on this, but uh, there is a risk for some risk for softening of the bones. There's some risk of uh, uh, which bone, true? Uh, <laughs> very funny, very funny. Uh, but I, I don't know. For instance, that's a common treatment for people having pain with prostate cancer. You take off the testes. I, I don't know of any long-term consequences from that per se. And these days, you can obviously get replaced through injections of the hormone of testosterone right. um, in in the younger person before they reach puberty they continue to have sort of more female characteristics well, will high it, voice will it never will um, the hair and in the stays stuff the same stays basically the same meaning okay so if you remove the testes before puberty you, you don't get the male secondary sexual characteristics and so you don't hit puberty in other basically words basically right okay so you basically uh, you grow up you like look like Macaulay Culkin when you're 40 Five, right? That's it. I'll tell you, the women like that. <laughs> Whatever. They like a hairless guy with there, a fresh face. Am I right, Kelly? There's a plan for you yet, Adam. <laughs> well, there was a reason why they left him home alone, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no test. That'll but, be the uh, sequel. And uh, uh, do you guys have any comment about that? Is that... No, I think that's about it. Yeah. Oh, what about yeah. height? Do you continue to grow? No, or? They're lower stature. They're lower stature, and they don't obviously have the same sex drive and whatnot. A- Anna. Uh-huh. You're a little obsessed with the testy removal. It's oh, making no. me nervous. <laughs> I was just wondering, because I didn't feel like going. I mean, I'm just, it's a fiction novel, and I, you know, was just wondering about. All right, but don't, don't talk about this over the dinner table. Your poor brother's not going to be able to sleep. I don't have a brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, your dad's going to sleep with an army helmet on his crotch. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> The Castrati's, I think, were elevated in the culture. You know, if they were good Castrati's, they had quite a life to lead. Uh, but right. they were changed well, forever. Sure, you needed you needed to be compensated somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, you know, five bucks and a Pepsi is not going to do it if they're taking your nuts off. I don't know if they had Pepsis back then, but I'm just guessing they had some sort of carbonated beverage. Wouldn't you agree, Drew? <laughs> Whatever you say, Adam. And we'll be back. 
Well, we're back here at the uh, fabulous Beckman Auditorium at Caltech in beautiful um, Pasadena, California. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Roy and Dr. Roy and Dr. Carroll have both uh, left the building. Yeah, you chased them out. Under police escort, mm-hmm. I'm assuming. But it's Drew and I, and that's uh, Drew's enough doctor for the room. Am I right, crowd? They'll say anything you want them to, won't they? <laughs> it's amazing power you have. Hitler was a brilliant man, wasn't he? <laughs> All right, let's have those people removed. Shayla, 15, you are on Loveline. Hi. Okay, about a year ago, I started dating this guy named Chris, and I fell absolutely head over heels for him. And we were intimate and all that, and grew very close emotionally. I was able to tell him basically anything, things I couldn't tell my best friend. When we broke up, we didn't talk a lot for a few months, and then we started picking up like correspondence again, and I'm starting to like him again, but I don't know what I'm feeling, whether it's just old feelings resurfacing, whether I really do like him again. Some of my friends tell me I'm obsessed with him. Others tell me I'm just horny. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking, and I want to know if you could give wow. me an outsider's opinion. I, I experience her confusion. I mean, they're just listening to her, and I'm confused. I experience the horny part. Well, imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, Shayla. Yeah. Why did you guys break up in the first place? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't even know. Okay, he dropped you then, huh? It was sort of a mutual thing. Uh, I don't right. know. It, wait, wait, Shayla, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Why did you break up? We went out a couple of different times. We'd break up for a day or so because we were upset, and then we'd go back out. It was. Just what were you upset him. about? What were you upset about? He was. He seemed kind of distant for a while, right. and he, so he would he wouldn't talk to me. He so he wasn't as involved in the relationship as you needed him to be. Exactly. As you wanted him to be. And what's going to be different now? I don't know, but but when we talk now, he's like he used to be. He's as open. I can tell him as much as I could before. He he's the old Chris that I went out with. How old is he? How old is he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's fifteen. Fifteen also. Yeah. What do you think, Adam? Uh, I I think when you take the pressure off of a relationship, it always looks better. I mean, it's like you could juggle three balls alone in your room in front of a mirror and it'd be no problem. But if you tried to do it in front of a you know an auditorium of screaming people, you would drop them every time. And there's too much pressure, and that's what happens. Uh, we're live from Caltech, and we'll be back. All right. Well, here we are at uh, Beckman Auditorium in Caltech. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-568-3191. I'm Adam Caroli. He's Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. And uh, Shayla? Yeah? Who is 15, is wondering whether to get back together with uh, her 15-year-old boyfriend, Chris, uh, ex-boyfriend. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. But it, it really is true that a relationship is like a uh, magnifying glass on a rela- uh, uh, on on the individuals in it. Hmm. It's like your little ant and all of a sudden there's a magnifying glass and your ass is on fire right. and you're scrambling around. Right. You remove the magnifying glass of the relationship and all of a sudden you go back to your stuff. You know, collecting twigs or whatever an ant does. My point is is everyone looks good out of a relationship. So when they get back involved you think all the old stuff's going to come back. Go ahead and expect the same thing. But but you think she might want to try it again. No, nah, I, I don't know. If you want more of the same, try it again. I guarantee it will be more of the same. Okay. That's a, I think that's a, a reasonable probability, Shayla. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. You, you got to make up your mind. Do what yeah. you want to do. Amanda, 14, you're on Loveline. Hello. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, I've, over the last few years, I've, um, like, I've gotten crushes with a lot of guys, and they're all like the wrong type for me. I was just wondering, like, what I could do to stop it. What does the wrong type mean? Like, well, sometimes they're, like, bad. They're, like, they could be involved in gangs or hanging around with people in gangs. Okay. Or they're just, like, really popular. They don't really care about their schoolwork, and they just treat themselves. Do they care about you? Do they care about you when you get, do they care about you when you get involved with them? Um, not really. I'm, right. I, I haven't actually found, or gotten involved with one of them, but I'm just afraid that if I do, I'm going to get hurt. I want to prevent this from happening. Good. That's good Good judgment. So you're not actually having relationships with these guys. Right. I just want to, like, stop falling in love with all of these guys because I get hurt. I get really depressed and stuff like that. 
that when I find out that they're never going to go out with me, or I realize they're mm. going to go out with me. God, probably the the, the unf whether this is achievable or not, the way to get over it is to have a genuine relationship with somebody who does fulfill your needs. If you're capable of that, I mean, you may not be. You may be seeking these abusive relationships because that's what you're used to in your home. Well, they're sort of fantasy relationships. They're not necessarily abusive. They would be abusive. She knows they'd be abusive. That's her. Well, sense she of knows it. the guys are a holes, but uh, they're not necessarily abusing her. She just all right. She's getting involved with people uh, emotionally who she right. shouldn't be getting involved with. Thus, never being able to have a relationship right. because it's wrong. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like what I when I was dating Sandra Bullock. Oh, really? Oh, yes. I mean, just just in my bathroom. But the point is, is she was uh, unobtainable. Yes. I knew I couldn't have her. Right. So it was a fantasy relationship. Right. Oh, but I tell you, I would have given her the best three minutes of her life, man. That's scary. Amanda. Yeah. Find something more genuine. Find something with somebody your age, somebody whom you really have a potential to have a relationship with. Just kind of wade into that kind of thing and see how it feels, okay? Don't stay so focused on these fantasy relationships, all right? All right. Kristen, uh, 17, you're on Loveline. Um, yeah, it's actually, I have more of a problem of, like, with my friends, because, um, I've been talking to this guy for, like, a while that I met, and, um, they don't really like me talking to him and stuff, because he, well, he's very racist and everything, and, um, and... Didn't we have this call a couple, week, like, a week ago? So a week ago? So, um, no. yeah, I've been talking to him for, like... About a month on the phone. Like no, we had we had a call about a girl whose boyfriend was racist, and the family didn't like the racist uh, boyfriend. Right. Is that what you're talking right. about? <laughs> and uh, like just like treat me like like really bad and stuff. And I mean, I really like him a lot, and I think he likes me. And I, I mean, I know I'm I should be cautious with with him. I mean, I haven't met, I haven't seen him since I met him. I've just been on the phone with him. But, How did um, you meet him? Huh? How did you meet him? Clan rally? Um, at a dance club. Mm. I met him, and at first I was just like, you know, whatever, but I've been talking to him for a while, and I mean, I really do like him, but I mean, my friends are saying that if, you know, if I, like, see him, I mean, you, uh, I mean, all right, wait a minute, Kristen. You're not really having a relationship. You saw him uh, goose stepping out there on the dance floor. You went over there, did a little goose step with him, and since then you've been talking on the phone. But you never even seen the guy again. No, I mean that's not a relationship. It's just, I mean, I want to see him. It's just that my friends like don't want me to. And well, how do you know where this guy? I mean, is he just a skinhead, or is he? Is he? I mean, does he have a? Sh is he a guy with a shaved head who looks like a racist, or do you? And do you know what his ideologies are? No, he is. <laughs> Okay, so, so, all right, so the guy's probably got problems. We were talking about this, right, Drew. Right, a, uh, When you're an a-hole, a it's pervasive. Right. It's, it's all aspects. You're an a-hole when you drive. You're an a-hole when it comes to dealing with other people and other races. You're an a-hole to your dog. Actually, if, not if it's a pit bull or a Rottweiler. A lot of these guys love the Rottweilers. But you're an a-hole to your neighbor. You're an a-hole to your wife. You're an a-hole to your kids. That's what makes you an a-hole. If you're just an a-hole in one category, that's not enough to be an a-hole. It's an all-encompassing thing. It's, right. Right. It's like the decathlon when, in the Olympics. You must, you must have a good score, a good a-hole score in all ten events in order to take home the gold. And, and what he's saying is these people tend to be characterologically disturbed. And that, and that disturbance, as we've talked already this evening, tends to become highlighted in a relationship. And that's when you become the victim of a lot of this chaos. So right. Your friends have good instincts. You, for some reason, don't. And uh, try to listen to your friends. Maybe they have a more objective view on what's going on here, okay? At least it's not your parents telling you not to do it. Then she's guaranteed to do it, isn't she? Absolutely. So. Chris, 16, you're on Loveline. Hey, I got a problem. Okay. My problem is I'm going out with my girlfriend, and my best friend is going out with her best friend. And they're bringing up some kind of swing switch thing. And it's fully cool with me. I could care less. But they're giving less. me the duty to ask my girlfriend, and I don't know how to ask her. Um, how about one of those, um, uh, you know, uh, they have those uh, customized Hallmark cards now where you can, you know, make up your own. Uh, as, you know, like, so you thought about pulling a train. Or, you know, maybe a big picture of, like, a friendly choo-choo chugging up the hill with... 
I, I don't know. It's off the top of my head. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, your relationship and the relationship between your friends is destined to destruction if you do this. Okay, if you really don't care, then you really don't care. But uh, if you care at all about these people, uh, it's going to be a very serious, destabilizing phenomenon. So you're saying forget about the whole thing? I think if you give a damn about any of these people, you'd forget about it. Because right, relationships, that go, relationships that go into this kind of thing tend not to survive, especially at your age. It's ridiculous. Chuck. It's recoculous. Yeah, it's recoculous. Chuck, you're 23. You're on Loveline. How's it going? Good. Okay, I got some questions about, like, chicks here. Um, one is very sensitive fellow. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, well, how well, how does a guy, girl define the difference between like sleeping with a guy and then like just performing like oral pleasures on a guy? Like, what's the difference there? Like, my question is because like this girl, like she she says it's like, it's where the penis ends up, isn't it? I guess so, but I mean, if you if someone like this, all right, I've been dating this girl. And for several years while I was at school, and then we, I accept like uh, I graduated, and now we haven't really defined anything since I've been gone, but we kind of have. And uh, now it's she's just performing oral pleasure on these guys, but she says she loves me. Like these guys. Well, one or two guys, from what I understand. Oh, that's so strange. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's peculiar that that somebody would set those kinds of boundaries in that manner. And, well, and there let wasn't me... really any boundaries set. All right, but Chuck, rest assured, if she's admitting to one or two guys, uh, it's the whole soccer team she's actually going down oh, come on. on. No, it, it, if she admits one or two, you can go three or four. That's true. All right, I mean, is that safe? I believe that she hasn't slept with them. Does that mean something? Yeah, there's a strange phenomenon going on. I've heard high school age people talk about this, that somehow oral sex is now included in sort of petting, and that intercourse is something that requires a much more substantial emotional commitment. And there's something to that. I mean, that people do develop a certain of emotional closeness with, with intercourse that they don't necessarily develop with uh, the, the lesser encounters. And, uh, you know, there's a, this acknowledgement that it's a dangerous thing, that you can get sexual, sexually transmitted disease. But, of course, you can get that from the oral sex, too. And you can also get the same kind of an emotional connection with somebody. But uh, there's an interesting, at least, acknowledgement that you're going to feel bad, potentially, if you get too physically close to somebody because of the emotional content that comes with it. Right. But, uh, when uh, Drew, you'll attest to this. When you were in high school, that the uh, oral pleasure was part different. was not that tacked was on. No, no, that was different. That was a long time ago. I mean, you had to pay good money for that I'll kind of thing back then. No, seriously, I had to leave the state, too, oftentimes. This is not something you got on dates. This is, this was, this is a pack, this was a package. It was like when you bought the car. You, you, you either get the wood grain, and that comes with the rims and the sunroof, or you get none of it. You don't get the car. Or, you, or yeah, or you don't get the car. I see. Or you go to Nevada and rent the car, but <laughs> that's a whole different thing. But what I'm saying is, is, it, it was you would never get o pleasured orally. Right. That's I, find, right. I found no, myself different. cleaning it, up my language here with the live audience for some reason. It, it's it's uh it is different. Now. If you were going to get the blow job, you're going to get intercourse as well. Now okay. you could get one without the other. Right. And but there but there is it, the the good she part of that. The line, though. She draws yeah, but Chuck, line. I'm telling you something. The, the positive aspect that I see of that is that people are at least acknowledging that the physical relationship carries some very heavy emotional kinds of phenomena. intercourse. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think people, are, by experimenting this matter, are going to learn that any kind of heavy physical relationship could have the same consequences. Yeah, but Chuck, come on. I mean, this is... Girl a... with, like, ditching or what? Listen, like... Chuck, Chuck, it okay. doesn't... It wouldn't matter if she was just soul-kissing these guys or even... Uh... Not right now. Okay. All right, All right, Chuck. Well, thanks a lot. All right. Have a good good luck. Jenny, 14, you're on Loveline. Hey, um, I have, like... A uh, parent problem thing. It's um, it's like doesn't seem that big. It, it just bugs me. Um, my parents do like are really not like good about the dating whole concept. I'm gonna I'm gonna be like 14 in a couple days, and they just won't um like let me even go out with like a group of friends and a guy and it's just i like feel like i need somebody you know just like a guy to talk to on the phone and a guy just like to meet friday or something it's with my friends and stuff and it's just my parents like they say oh well uh yeah it's just this is this is the 90s it, it was different when we, when we were little it's like this is the 90s they, there's like so many diseases like aids and stuff today and i keep telling them like you're not going to get aids from going to a movie or like 
meeting a guy up someplace, like the roller rink or something, but they, like, don't understand that. How can I really talk to them? It's like, you know. Would they feel more comfortable if they were, if they were chaperoning you in some way? I think so. I think there's, like. Oh, the, oh, that ain't going to work. Hey, Come no, on. Maybe just, it's a like, step. Are really, you saying, uh, Jenny, 14. but Jenny, how uncomfortable would you be having sex in front of your parents oh, that way? Oh, let's cut it out. <laughs> Isn't that the thing, though? I'm just saying, I want them to, like, trust me, you know? Right, and right. Just, and, and, that's, and that's, you, you seem to be appropriate in what you want to do and what you wish to do. And I, I think you've got to really work on getting your patient, your parents to compromise with you if you possibly can. And here, here's the deal. Here's what you should tell your parents. And, Drew, we've talked about this many a time. Mm. They will hold you down for as long as they can hold you down. But once you wiggle yourself free... Once you, uh, once they go out of town for a long weekend, once you figure out that you can uh, open up your bedroom window and climb down the trellis there, once you find a friend that uh, has a permit and has some wheels, you are out of there, and then you're on some kind of sexual rampage at that point because, because basically it's like you're 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 an escape con looking for sex at this point. Well, you know what I'm saying? You're over the wall. Yeah, but it, it can you're be. You're gone. Let's you, you would act out against the, the the suppression that you felt i mean uh, adam, the, adam you, yes. you, you you were sort of the, one of the prime examples of this in regard to your dietary habits uh, exactly right and let, let me let me relate this story sure. again Go ahead. Uh, my mother was uh, what you call one of these health food hippies right you know uh, tofu this and uh you know jenny so, fed him yeah. weeds fed him weeds one time because uh, well, who was the guy yul gibbons said it was a I good thing yeah, that, weeds that, out of his yard Christ sake, this yul gibbons you know he did that grape nuts commercial where he ate half a frickin' sycamore tree, and now everyone's out cooking everything in the yard. So my mom's, you know, I'm being weaned on pine nuts and, and, and deep-fried tofu and oh. all this kind of soy lard and all kinds of, I mean, it was basically like a big plate of crap would show up every night. It was like, uh, you know, when they do the science, the science fiction movies right. and they eat in the future and everything just looks like a big purple mess? Right. That's what I had to eat. Right. But once a week, I would go next door and babysit over at the Horwitz family. Oh, and they loved their kid. And they had a pantry stocked full of food. And as soon as they would leave, as soon as that door would close... Actually, I would go look for the Playboys. But as soon as I was done turning the house over, looking for the Playboys, actually pulling off drywall and, and fixtures and things, all right, all right. after I found the Playboys, I'd go right to the pantry, and I would open a can of pie filling. I would dump it in a bowl. Now, oh. pie filling is just basically like corn syrup with a little purple coloring and like a half a grape in there. And I would dump like mini marshmallows on top of it and count chocula and little jimmies. And then I would just oh. spoon powdered sugar over the top of that. I Basically, I busted a valve. I went nuts because I was I was so... I, I was, I was, yeah, I was chomping at the yeah, bit. Yeah. I was, I was kept down, and once I got out, boom, I went, I went wacko. And the same thing happens sexually when you try to keep people down; they they go the other way. But still, try to reach a compromise. I mean, I think they're being a little overbearing, and, and you might be able to get. You sound sensible and you sound assertive, so try to get your point of view, your needs, and your wishes known to them. Okay? They are like really overprotective. And everything. Well, I just really don't know what to say to them. Like, uh, you got to earn their trust slowly. It's not something you can do with one conversation. It's something you do over the course of time. You bring home good grades. You bring home a friend or two. They turn out to be okay, so on and so forth. Though. I'm a straight-A student at school, and, like, the, all my friends are, like, really good. I'm just, like, I mean, all right. I'm, like, well, Jenny, and everything. All I right. don't know. I joined the nunnery then. Jenny, I'm no, no, sorry. Keep at him. John, 17. Uh, Jenny, adios. Fantastic. Hi. Stupid dually over there. The yeah, John, you're 17. You're on Love Line. Yeah. I was wondering if you could call me Dick, though, so my friends don't notice. No, this is not a... We didn't, we're going to get rid of John. All right. We are? Yeah. yeah I've been yeah. wanting to call someone no. Dick all night. No, somebody because the content of that call was something very serious, and somebody would not have that kind of an attitude coming in. Thank you. Hey. Ricky, you're 16. You're on Loveline. Ricky. Um, yeah. Um, um, hello? Um, well, yeah. I broke up with my girlfriend about three months ago, and like I care for her a lot. Like, I used to love her, but it's, like, not love anymore. And it's just, like, I care about her a lot. And I found out she was seeing this, it's like, she's seen this other guy. And, um, and, like, I, um, a Friday, I was at school, and I thought, like, I seen them talking or whatever. And some of my friends and her friends were there. And, like, they were talking, and, like, he, like, kind of, like, started cussing. And, like, he kind of, like, started cussing her friends. And I didn't like it. It's, like, and it really bothered me a lot. 
and like I was wondering if I should just like butt out or like should I tell her something because I don't want her like get mad at me or thinking you didn't like the way your ex girlfriend is being treated by her present boyfriend. Well, I'm, they're not they're not with each other. They're just seeing like they're just like talking. Well, so they're just talking. Yeah. Well, so what are you what are you gonna tell her to do? Stop seeing him at school once in a while? No, it's, it's like I just feel like I should tell her like like. Um, why don't you I'll, advise? Why don't you? It's okay to advise her, but don't get in the middle of it. Yeah. I mean, if if she wants to hear what you have to say, go ahead and talk to her. If she's not interested, butt out. But she doesn't have a relationship with the guy, right, Ricky? No, not that I know of. No. Uh, not that you know of. You can't be responsible for everything she does, even even though I know you have feelings for her at one time. But give her your perspective and how it makes you feel, okay? Okay. All right. And you have to learn to let go. Am I right, Drew? Yeah, that's it. Rick, fifteen. You're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. Uh, how you guys doing tonight? Good. Okay. Basically, what's happened is about a week ago, I was going to go over to my girlfriend's house, but, you know, my friend's having a party because his parents were away for two weeks, so I went over there, got a little wasted. She got kind of pissed off at me, and basically, I was supposed to go to a picnic with her and her parents, you know, go meet the parents and stuff, get, to, get them to like you yesterday, and basically what happened is, my friends accidentally got me drunk, and so I couldn't go to it, and she's got really mad yeah, at me. Accidentally, huh? Oh, yeah, no, it's happened to me. They they hold you down. They, they tie you down like you You ever see that movie Gulliver's Travels? Sure. Like the big giant the, the guy? The Lilliputians get you down. The Lilliput people, they tie you down, then they force the beer bong down your throat, and they keep dumping the Mickey's Big Mouth in there until Disgusting. you can no longer resist. Disgusting. Absolutely. No, my friends tricked me into it. They um made a couple screwdrivers, and... Basically, I thought it was an orange juice, so... Right. My friend makes some pretty good screwdrivers. Yeah, everybody knows that <laughs> orange juice and screwdriver taste exactly alike. Oh, yeah. Vodka is virtually uh, undetectable, Drew. Amazing. Well, Rick, yeah. say, start taking responsibility for your life. You got loaded with your buddies, and, and you flaked out on the picnic. Yeah. Your okay. girlfriend would probably be more likely to accept your apologies if you put it in that way. Yeah, because you guys are going to argue for days if you come at her with this BS of my buddies got me loaded. You understand? That's what you're going to argue about. It's not. It's it, it's not going to. You, you'll you'll get away from the the real problem, right, the which real is issue. which is you not showing up right. and you're banning her that's and right. you argue over whose fault it was. Uh, that's right. Man has to uh, learn to take responsibility for himself, doesn't Adam, he, Drew? Yes, indeed they do, Monsieur. And uh, with that, I'm going to urinate. <laughs> But I'm going to go, I won't do it here on stage, and we'll be back. Hi, this is Tony Bennett, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yes, indeed. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191, 1-800-568-3191. We're coming to you live from Caltech, uh, Beckman Auditorium in uh, beautiful Pasadena, California. Is it Pasadena, Los Angeles? No. No. That would be uh, redundant, or yes. or that would be just plain wrong. That would be just plain wrong. All crazy. right, but we're in California, aren't we? That's where we are. Fantastic, Drew. Uh, tomorrow night's guest, we have uh, Lamont Bentley and Countess Vaughn, both from Moesha. Also coming up on Love Line, we have Imperial Drag, Chris Hardwick, my buddy from uh, that MTV, MTV yeah. uh, show he's on. Yes, we have Slayer. We have uh, Thomas uh, Calabro. Did I pronounce that right? He's what, Michael Mancini? Michael Mancini, Dr. Mancini from right. Melrose Place. So we're going to have a good time with all those people coming up on Loveline. But until then, we're going back to the phones. Marie. Yeah? I had a question about diet pills. And How old are you? How old are you, Marie? Oh, I'm 17. Okay. Um, I usually, t like, I take more than one a day because one doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. And I also work out, and I was reading an article about, like, diet tea and how, like, it speeds your heart rate and, like, some people have died from it. What, what diet pills are you talking about? Um, I have, like, one that's herbal, and then I also have one that's, um, just, like, Dexatrim. I, well, I use, like, all different kinds. So, so you're using over-the-counter diet yeah. supplements? Yes. Um, do you vomit or use laxatives or anything like that? Kristen, do you do any? Um, Kristen, get out. Sorry. Get out. Shut the door, please. Sorry. Um, I yeah, I do, but nobody. Right. No, okay. I'm... So, so Marie, the problem is you have an eating disorder. Uh, I can see Grandma was trying to get in and get her insulin, and Marie was like, "The hell out of here, Granny." It was my sister. 
Yeah, oh, okay. that, that's really the problem here. I mean, yes, you can. You know, the, the, what you probably read about was ephedra, which is in the herbal ecstasy, and that uh, can has been associated with some sudden death, and it can cause overdoses. And it's a, not a healthy product. None of these things are good for your health. But the real underlying problem here is an eating disorder. You have bulimia, and you need to understand that about one out of five people with bulimia actually die. And uh, it's something you need to get help with. It's a chronic illness. It's not something that magically goes away. And you really need to talk to your doctor about it. Uh, what, what, are those diet pills are basically speed, right? Yeah, real diet. I mean, prescription diet pills are absolutely that. They're amphetamines. I mean, don't don't let anybody tell you anything different. They are ultimately amphetamines. And do they just speed up your metabolism? And and as a side effect of that, they they speed up a lot of things. They speed up your central nervous system. They speed up your heart rate. They speed up. They increase your blood pressure. But as a side effect, they suppress your appetite. Oh, really? Yeah. You're so busy pulling your hair out, you forget to eat? Could be that. All right. Marie, get this taken care of. It's very, very serious, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. Owl, 20. That is owl, isn't it? Owl, that's what it says. Uh, You're on Love Line, so um, we're going to ask Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl? Hey, everybody. Hey. Uh, Yeah, I had a question. Um, I uh, personally uh, do not use narcotics and... um, Alcohol. Just pot. Just pot yeah. by the hay bale, right? Right. Right. And, uh, <laughs> Making a big uh, cannabis smoothie every morning. <laughs> and, yeah. Hey, give us a little owl. Yeah. Give us give us a little uh, hoot, would you? Give us a laugh. <laughs> no, I don't make owl noise. No, that was good. All right, forget the owl noise, but just give us a just give us a laugh. A laugh. And a make yeah. him laugh. Uh, oh, for Christ's sake! I, what kind of pressure are you trying to put on me, Drew? Yeah, Al, really. come on, give us a laugh. Uh, I don't laugh on command. No, I'm going to cut you off unless you laugh. Okay. Um, I'll laugh. <laughs> I can't really laugh. Oh, for Christ's sake, everything Jeez. I try just crashes, just goes down in flames, doesn't it? Not a good night. All right, Al, now I'm pissed at you, so go ahead. Uh, how's it work? I, I got a huge tattoo of an owl on my back. Nice. That's, All right. I mean, All right, Woodsy, what's your question? Well, anyway, I need to find a way to uh find uh what's the word i'm looking for uh the door? <laughs> wow. Wow. i need, I need to you find need a to... way to uh start to date women who don't use uh narcotics. then you, you need to clean yourself up well i am clean now well for how long a couple days i have uh nine months clean and I'm in a recovery program. But that, that's okay. not off of marijuana, is it? Uh, no, not from all marijuana. I used all everything you've heard of, probably I've used. Right, right. But I mean, have you been off marijuana for nine months? I've been off marijuana for a year. Okay, I've been really? Off everything. He's for, off everything. Okay. Yeah. How come? You know, first of all, you know that one of the principles of your treatment is that you don't get in a new relationship relationships for a year, right? Right. And I, know that's, I know that's hard, but it's important. Secondly, if you go into meetings, you must be inter- interfacing with and connecting with a lot of recovering people. Well, I do, but I'm not, I'm not saying you should go the... there. I'm not saying you should go there with the purpose of ha- developing a relationship, but you will at least be meeting a network of friends who are recovering or at least not using. Yeah, uh, but these people, all those people, have so many other sorts of problems of you know going on that are going on at, at you know all day in their lives that that uh. You can't find anybody that's not in the program but doesn't use drugs. Um, right. What you do know, you mean you can't he's find? A, he's having trouble meeting people who aren't ultimately. He, he attracts people who use his drugs, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and when he goes out know. there and he's outside of the, in the recovering community, everybody's too busy focusing on he their own He can't find anyone in the program who's not doing drugs? No, no, no. It, he's saying, he is, he, you're not supposed to really date somebody from the program when you're a newcomer like that. And even then, you shouldn't be thinking in that terms with your relationships you develop in the program. But uh, it's like saying, I, 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 uh, I can't find any guys in the gay bar who yeah. give me a blowjob. Yeah, but, it's, but it's yeah, different. But... It's the people are there for not to get relationships. But I'm just saying that he may be able to network from there and develop a, a group of friends who are recovering who don't use drugs and the other problem he has when he goes out he interacts people who use drugs and so yeah. his, his concern is how come he can't find people who don't use drugs in the community outside of the sober network i'll tell you because I, I just talking to you al is this close to sparking up a joint i mean you do kind of have that it's sort of it's like it's like watching a cheech and chong movie talking al you're like hey let's go score i wasn't thinking about it but you know come to think of it all right so al yeah listen 
I stay am. on the straight and narrow. Stay, stay sober. You, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Don't be in too big a rush for a relationship. Right. Like get yourself back on your feet and and, and all that good and uh, cliche to crap. Try to and develop then, a network of right. non-using friends, and eventually you'll I, connect with somebody. Right. I, I do have a network of like more than I can handle of amount of friends. Right. Um, but still, they they just. A lot have, of them are using. You know, I want them to work on their other issues right, of addictions right, and whatever right, they have. Right. And don't get involved with somebody like that; they'll take you down. All right, Al. Okay. I've already well, I've already done that, and it's Al. Took, it's hey, tell Dooley, huh, man. What's that? Al, we're here. For sake. Oh, um, and I, I, you know, and, and outside the program, I can't seem to like find, like you said, like I, they must be attracted to me. And right, right. The drug people. Al, you know, I don't think we can say any more than we already have, pal. It's just the, you're doing it the right way. Keep developing relationship. Be very careful whom you get involved with, and eventually this will all sort itself out. All right, and a quick message for engineer um, engineer Mike over there, the one that wonder. Hey, engineer Mike, yeah, are you he, there? He was asleep at the wheel. Get up, would you? For Christ's sake, we're trying to get off the phone with Al for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> He was only on the phone for four minutes, but we're trying to get on for 45 minutes. Are you there? Are you there, Engineer Mike? I'm going to throttle you when I see you tomorrow. All right. <laughs> uh, Ellie? 19. Uh, Eli. Eli or Ellie? Hey, uh, it's Eli. I'm going with Eli. Yeah, what's Ellie? You have two L's? Mm. Uh, all right, know, like forget it. Yeah. All right, all right. Ellie has a rope for a belt. That's how you know it's Ellie. Eli, what do you want? Uh... My question is, okay, I masturbate a lot, mm -hmm. like about four times a day, and I can't seem to get a gratification out of it. Mm -hmm. what, do mean, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean gratification? Um, He's using it to try to deal with some kind of an emotional issue, and it doesn't gratify him. It doesn't escape whatever feeling it is he's uh, trying to deal with. The, the, the feeling is that uh, it, it deals with women, uh, see, because I've had enough, you know, one-night stand type relationships. And I want to, you know, something more uh, stable. And so, I, you know, masturbate to get that off my mind. And yeah, but you know what? You'd think it would work, but it doesn't. It, it just gets you all hopped up. It's like uh, we have uh, talked about before when you take the little dog and you rub its belly real good and the thing gets going and you let it go and it starts humping a pillow. <laughs> it's the same type of thing. You, you get yourself... And, but, D Eli, yeah, you have no self-control, do you? Nope. Absolutely not. not as, at all. As, as soon as you think the the word, you don't even get to the bait part of masturbate, do you? As soon as master comes into your head, your pants are down around your ankles, right? Pretty much. All right, but you 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 bring yourself, you, you finish your job, right? Uh huh. But you just keep wanting more. Yep. It's, it's what happens when you become addicted, by the way, to that's anything. Right. It's like the same, right. same with heroin, when right? You, well, it's a little bit different, but when you start to seek... Well, I know you're not you know, yeah, yeah, jerking yeah. the syringe around, but you, you what I'm saying is... thrill or seek uh, dysfunctional solutions to internal situations, yeah, it doesn't f work. Right. It works a little bit until you learn how to do it, and then it doesn't work anymore. So you're saying the answer is five times a day, right? <laughs> no, the answer is uh, figure out what's troubling him and work on that. All right. All right, Eli. Thanks. This is now uh, yeah. uh, Amanda. Wait, wait, where are you going? I'm going to Amanda. Where are you going? All right, Amanda. Yeah. You're 16. You're on Love Line. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous, but um, I have a problem. My, I guess this is kind of my boyfriend just told me tonight that he wants to kill himself, and I don't know what to say, and I'm scared that I actually kind of said the wrong thing to him because I told him that it wasn't fair because a lot of people care about him and that I'm one of them and that That's he's good. just hurting all of us. That's fine. That's not a bad uh, no. angle. That's yeah, but he walked off kind of angry. And I, when I asked him, I was like, you can't, you're not doing it tonight. He basically said that he doesn't know. He thinks about it every day. Well, uh, and it th seems like tonight seemed a little worse than usual. All right. Well, the most important thing is that you take these threats very seriously. and I that do, you. But the thing is, is, I mean, he's been... He's. I just recently found out that he's already had psychiatric help. He's been in a hospital before. All right. Well, but the, all the more reason to take these things very, very seriously. He probably has had previous attempts at suicide, and he may not have any intention to actually hurt himself. People his age have sort of a magical way of thinking about suicide, that somehow they're going to be behind, or, you know, they'll be there, there to see the, the way that they're able to at the affect, funeral. Yeah, affect all the he's people like that they... He feels like, I mean, well, he has, still, I mean, he's still in high school. 
Right. It's still that age can be thinking that way. But more importantly, he has serious depression. He has serious problems psychiatrically. And this is not the first time that he's made these sorts of threats. And you've got to take them terribly seriously and but get him sure back. He's on medication for it. Get him back into treatment. Find out who his treating people are and get, get back to them. Get, let them know that he is threatening suicide. And he may have to be held against his will somewhere. See, okay, that's it's, the it's, thing. He wants to go into a mental hospital, but they won't accept him. Why? At this time. Well, it's Why? catch-22. If you want to go to a mental hospital, you're too sane to actually <laughs> yeah, belong. Yeah, he actually, I mean, today he basically gave me an ultimatum of, like, what would make him happy. And it's like killing himself, going back to the mental institution. Well, I mean, sometimes people manipulate through these sorts of behaviors. And people who have real, very serious psycho- uh, character logic problems will constantly threaten suicide and constantly sort of use the system and become dependent on the psychiatric system. Uh, so it may be one of those situations, but I don't know. You're not in a position to make that and, uh, determination. Yeah, you've, is... got to, you've got to take it terribly, terribly seriously. Yeah. Okay? I do. I just... All right, Amanda. Tell some adults. Tell some. Tell the call the police. Do make some consequences around these sorts of threats, so he doesn't make them. If he if these are just empty threats, he won't make them anymore. If you develop consequences every time he does it, and if it's a serious threat, you'll you'll notify the appropriate authorities. All right, Amanda. All right, fantastic, Drew. Hey. hey is it safe to say? And I know it, it doesn't make any difference. You still have to react as if uh, it was going down, but. People who want to kill themselves, who really hell bent on killing themselves, right. like um, you know members of uh, Clinton's cabinet and right. generals and things like that, they don't tell people; they right. do it. That's right. People who that that's the scariest time. It's not always that type of suicide that complete the suicide, but that certainly is the most scary type because you have no warning and no opportunity to intervene. It's very right. difficult. Usually, to... and I hate to sound too uh, cliche, but it's a cry for help. I mean, when you're announcing to people, "I'm going to kill myself," it right. usually means you're. You, don't let me. Don't let me kill myself right. or give me some quick sex before I kill. Oh, no, I'm talking to you, Drew. Mm. All right. All right. We're getting morbid now, and we'll be back. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. We are live from Beckman Auditorium in uh, beautiful Pasadena, California, at, on the campus of Caltech. Makes me wish I studied, Drew. This is a beautiful facility. You can feel the intelligence here, can you? I'm, uh, I'm guessing not a lot of attractive women on campus, uh, Drew. Am I right? I, I don't know. I don't go to school here. Funny hair, uh, pocket liners, uh, outdated fashions. Eh, but that's okay. They're smart, and uh, they're going to figure out this whole earthquake thing eventually. All right, I'm not going to make fun of, <laughs> I'm not going to make fun of the people whose campus I'm on now. But uh, I, I don't, it just seems to me, Drew. It just seems to me with all the equipment we have and all the technology in place that we get there's a little more advanced warning on these earthquake things. But that's just me. All right. All right. Uh, now I don't know I'm, anything about it. Sniper's taking his position at the top of the auditorium, and I should be taken out any moment now. Uh, Alexi. Hello? Yes, you're 29. You're on Loveline. Yeah, I had a question about uh, for Dr. Drew about one of the callers earlier. He was talking about... Um, how oral sex wasn't as important as other... No, I wasn't saying that. Once again, you got to listen carefully. I was saying that in I'm hearing young people t- say... Yeah, the caller was saying that it wasn't as I've important. Heard that, I've heard that before, that it doesn't have the same impact and it's taken much more casually than it certainly was when I was in high school. And there oh, is yeah. at least an acknowledgement that intercourse or sexual contact of any type carries an emotional... Content. Yeah, definitely. When I, was in, when I was in high school, we had to pull a permit for a hand job. But my 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 question was in in terms of um, sexual molestation, and when you um, have to deal with child protective services and such, it's the same, it's the same thing. One of the things that makes it more serious is when That's it's right. gone from just um, hands-on contact to oral sex. Right. Um, and it's right. upgraded a lot. It becomes a lot more serious. Uh, listen, so I, 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 I psychologically, the, there's a, that's right. If, if I guess I was making a point, it was why this is that this is a mystery to me that young people should draw the line right there. Because, in fact, there is the same kinds of consequences, maybe not quite as intense, but the same kinds of consequences emotionally and in terms of risk of infectious disease. For oh, oral yeah. sex, as with the intercourse. And it's so. messier, too, really. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> well, there's cons. There's cleaning. All right, all right. There's cons. I don't want you to go. I'm working the dry cleaning angle, Drew. All right. Alexei? Yes. Alexei? You have no problem with what Drew said. No. But no. I just, right. I, I thought it was odd that 
they would think that it was it was so that the the caller would think that it was like so non important. But that's if you look at the laws that's and stuff, a, right? And I agree with you. And that's what I was pointing out how peculiar it is. But that's the way it is, and that's the way it things really are. Does have a social, uh, you a, bet a it does. Impact. You bet it does. Alexi. Yes. When's the uh, last time you uh, partook in a little oral pleasure? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing uh, it was during the Eisenhower administration. No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, thanks for calling. It's fantastic. <sighs> uh, Drew. Uh, Lisa, you're 20. You're on Loveline. Hi, how you doing? Good. I have a big problem. I, my fiancé and I are getting married in August. And uh, we don't seem to have the support of a lot of our friends. And these are people I've known for upwards of 10 years. And as well as we're not getting any support from his side of the family. And I'm just wondering what we should do. Why not? I don't know. They say that we're too young and they're afraid that we won't finish our education. That kind of thing. But that's I'm already going to be a senior at a very good school next year. Uh-huh. And and he's, going, he's going to bartending college? No, something like that. More like uh, engineering school. So. Oh, all right. Yeah, I mean, why uh, why does getting married make you uh, not want to complete your education, Drew? I don't know. I, do I don't have an answer to that. Does? No, I don't necessarily think. Do you think it necessarily does? I, I absolutely don't know. You I, know. Maybe, maybe it's that people, and this is a realistic concern, that you have now the responsibility to support yourselves, and you have to get and get it to work. And if you work, you might at least detract from your uh, scholastic responsibilities. Well, yeah. If not, abandon them altogether. And they're thinking marriage includes kids, which includes right. work, which includes you staying home, which right. includes you watching daytime TV and getting fat and not doing your studies. And I know, Drew, I know this is a legitimate concern, because I could remember when I had a serious relationship in my early 20s, my parents were quite concerned that I'd give up the carpet cleaning. Imagine that. Yes, that I'd drop, you know, my calling, which was cleaning carpet, for wow. Christ's sake. Yes, but uh, luckily I, I, I realized, I, got, I prioritized, and I realized that going and cleaning IHOPs at 4 in the morning was more important than any relationship could ever be. Thank now, God now, it's wait, paying now. dividends now. And by the way, who was the person you were involved with at the time? Uh, you want a name? No, no. I mean, what was her she way was of a, supporting herself? Oh, well, she had rich parents. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was, uh, she was a sorority girl. All right. We went to a oh, sorority. I had a weird one, flashback. This was, oh, yes. Yeah, it was like uh, if, if Lincoln could have went back to the theater he was assassinated in. That's we, probably we, what, we, what you're telling, what you're, what you're referring to. We, we visited, we spoke at a sorority at the uh, university here. Yeah, my first girlfriend who I pined, uh, I went nuts for for like a good year, maybe 18 months. I mean, I was out of my mind for this girl a year and a half after we broke up and all sorts of insanity. And Drew and I went and spoke at a sorority, or from a sorority, once upon a time, at USC about a month ago. And lo and behold, at 80 Pi, that was the sorority she was in. So I had this bizarre flashback. In fact, show me the spot where you pined, where you sat in the corner crying. Oh, shut the hell up, Drew. I didn't show you this. Oh, you guys don't believe that. But I, 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 I did sort of put together a makeshift panty raid. Crying in the corner, yeah, for Christ's sake. That's what you said to me. Uh, Richard, 16, you're on Love Line. I said, I did not. Crying. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> Rococulous. Never heard such lies. Richard? Yeah, hi, guys. Yeah. Um, I, I go to a boarding school, an all men's boarding school. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I pretty much, I mean, I think I'm straight. I, me and my friends joke around about girls all the time and everything. And, um, but, uh, the other day I was in my room, my roommate, my roommate came out of the shower and he only had his towel on and all of a sudden I got this massive erection and I was just overly turned on. I just, I couldn't help myself. Let's be honest, Richard. It wasn't really massive, was it? Come on, come on, be Uh, be serious. Well, he's, Uh, he's having a good time with me. Uh, well... Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, if, if for someone this age to begin, to, if indeed this is what's happening, you may in fact be developing some tendency towards homosexuality. It's a very difficult thing to come to grips well, with. Well, it may be not homo, but at least half mo. Well, he may be, may be homo. Okay. Maybe mo. I mean, it's just a couple of 
comes to these feelings at, at this age right now? Very difficult, very difficult. I mean, people that when you, it, you're going to have to just kind of sit back and see how this evolves. Uh, right. Don't deny the feelings if they're there. Don't act on them because they'll only confuse you even more. But this may be the beginning of, of a homosexual orientation, and they, you, you have to come to grips with that if that's the case. How can I make my family members come to feel? Don't, 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 you don't have to announce it at Thanksgiving. No, yeah, don't worry no. about it right now. Dad will slice his arm off with that electric no, knife. No, that makes him feel better. And just kind of sit back and see where these feelings take you. And over a couple of years, maybe it'll be more clear and you'll be more able to deal with them. Uh, the tough reality, that most people that are homosexual don't want to be homosexual. They, right. they, at this age, they become aware of it and they try to deny it and continue a heterosexual relationship. The feelings may take you into a heterosexual relationship or they may take you into a cowboy bar. It, it, it all depends. Yeah, we'll see. But just kind of recognize this may be the beginning of something and just listen to your feelings. Right. And this, this goes uh, like everything. They you don't have to file this under you don't have to act on it and you don't have to announce it it doesn't have to be your identity this minute for the rest of your life if you're just beginning to evolve some new feelings right exactly doug 26 you're on love line we're going um doug we have like one minute all right my wife and i've been together for five years um lately she's been talking about having another girl come in and join us during sex i don't know if i'm comfortable with that maybe she's not seeing enough in me and want something else to fulfill her pleasures. No, don't do or, it. Or, I don't know, guys. What can you say for me? I'd say don't do it. That uh, people that develop those sorts of habits in their relationships, the relationships don't survive. Uh -huh. They really don't. It's, it's a bad sign. Maybe you ought to really focus on what's going on with her. Go get some marital counseling and see why she's having these sorts of uh, feelings and see where things might be falling short a little bit in your relationship. It seems like everything's going great. Great sex life. Everything else is... Something is up. Something yeah. is up. Something is up. Doug, All right. I'm up, but... Yeah, yeah. Doug, yeah, everything's going... <laughs> great. Doug will be here all night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Doug, everything's going great. She just wants to get the uh, teenage neighbor girl to come in and join you when you're having sex, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. All right, and normally, the, I, I, you know, I'm really, I'm really torn on this because I, I realize this is a good, there's a side of me. Well, let's, let's call it three quarters of me. I'm not even going to call the side that says, hey, this is a good thing. Right. But there's also a side of me that knows that if you're married, if it's an important relationship, right. uh, that it's probably the beginning of the end when you do this. But right. on the other hand, her wanting to involve a third or fourth person is the beginning of well, the end. But, it's but, not necessarily yeah. the actual act. It's, it's her, the it's, fact that she wants it's it. It's a symptom, and you can take care of that symptom properly, or you can continue down the path towards trouble. All right, so try to figure out what it is, and uh, if you end up agreeing on it, make sure she's busty, and we'll be back. would like to thank uh, Roy Antilles, Dr. Roy, and uh, Dr. Carol Lieberman for coming in and joining us tonight. I would like to thank Dr. Drew for trying to give something back to the community he's been raping over the years. I Fantastic, out, Drew. Out. <laughs> no, but, but doing a good turn, talking about violence uh, in, in the home, and uh, I only wish I'd got here early enough to hear it, but I, uh, I, I hear through the grapevine and went swimmingly. I would like to thank the uh, lovely uh, producer, Ann, for doing a fantastic job tonight, boy. Boys, what do you think? Thank Caltech. Cold giving, as ice, though, guys. Believe me. Uh, thank Caltech for th giving us this in, this forum, this environment. Beautiful uh, hall to uh, to uh, broadcast from uh, tomorrow night. Uh, friends from Moesha will be in. Also, uh, Chris Hardwick later in the week, and Slayer, and uh, Doctor Mancini from Melrose Place. So we're all packed. So uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you to Sherry. Thank you for uh, to Lisa for doing the phones. Ron. Thank Ron's you to done. Ron for doing a good job, and everybody who made this uh, broadcast possible. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.